First gate, captivity. There is a chill in the air as you wait for the car outside the old airport. It prickles the skin of your face, awakening your senses, dulled by the routines of the mundane and the heavy dose of fantasy which has been clogging your veins. A stream of images which, for being exotic, and exciting are nonetheless sticky and slightly clawing. The inside of the car is a prelude to your initiatic journey. The blindfold engulf my smile and you are left with the scent of my perfume and my voice. You feel the vibrations of the road as I describe the blur of the suburbs, leaving a trail of ashen greys a new green. Silence. The Autobahn. Snippets of song from time bygone, when West Berlin was a fortress embedded in the mysterious East. The colors are vivid in your mind's eyes. You see my words, your only link to the tangible outside world. I stop talking. The sounds of the car speeding on the wet tarmac morphs into ropes saturated with water winding round the cockpit of the vehicle. Encased in a tight leather hood, the blood pumping at your temples becomes a rhythmic drone accompanying waves of images formed on the sea of your semi-conscious mind. Random scenes whiz by, seeking attention and dissolving, competing with the gnawing pain of the minute clamps pinching your nipples. Visions rise and ebb with your respiration. At first, they unformed ghostly the bacchanalia of mundane processions compounded by the body cohorts follow your irregular breath. They become more distinct as you grow accustomed to the engulfing warmth of the leather hood, a second skin, more rigid, dominant, to which your face responds and yields, grateful of the embrace. The road now seems to widen, promising a smoother ride allowing you to give in to the pain and to focus on a reoccurring, reassuring sequence loop. On inhalation, the head of precious resin of my perfume pricks your nostrils and invades your brain. A memory rises, the crimson room. You lay prostrate on the barren floor under the commanding presence of your mistress. Just as you feel my pointed heels dangerously planted on each side of your head, the image dissolves with your exhalation in a subtle cloud where lingers the shady notes of frankincense and bay leaves burned on the altar of the goddess. A new breath brought on a faint arabesque of amber-green notes, the softness of my gloved hand warming your expectant skin, the scent of resin pervading your brain as the image focuses and the taps become thuds. Again, the hallucination dissolves with exhalation. Again and again, your breath brings back the striking images, sharpened by the barely tolerable biting, radiating from your nipples, tracing unknown path to your groin and your loins, opening channels of synapses, filling with white-hot sensuous electricity, circling your balls and anus, biting your perineum and gripping the base of your cock before ascending the shaft and crowning the gland. Again and again, they give shape to the longing of your soul to surrender to my will 
and to my rituals. From ash and green to green and liquid still, the industrial zone is divided at right angles by arteries of asphalt punctuated by erected steel, morose tower blocks, austere estates. The car finally turns into streets lined by enormous warehouses, workshops, and follows a small lane slowing down along a gravel path. A flight of stairs, the first one of a long series of blind steps, and you are chained to the horizontal bar of a steel balcony. Are you on a terrace? A deck? You are alone. The texture of the air is smoother, mellow, fluid. A cold breeze animates the air and trees surrounding the lake and sing in long waves interrupted from time to time by the flight of aquatic birds. The pink gold of the setting sun gilds the calm waters. This is your last contact with the world. The pain becomes excruciating. You understand there is no turning back. You have entered through a crack between the worlds and must wander. In the suffocating blackness of the hood, you sense the veiled figure who beckons you to your captivity. And you instinctively follow the path leading to the stone staircase and the first gate bathed in amber glow. Through corridors and rooms, guided by my voice, you enter the underworld. The journey is slow as the volumes change around us. Small and narrow, spacious, small and cushioned, a hazardous descent on a metallic staircase triggers a disquieting soundtrack, our steps reverberating through a vast, hard, very high and cold space. You are made to kneel before a small door and I insert industrial plugs into your ears. Now, with only the sense of touch and scent, you follow me into the labyrinth. Narrow, low, small. You feel the walls closing around you as we enter the long tunnels leading to the matrix, the womb of the edifice, in which you will be symbolically entombed for two days, where you will be tested to your limits, stripped of more layers you knew you had, and finally renewed.